notes here. Anything else to add on the herbicide side of things, or I'm an that ethyl- portion of the of, of the plant stage that we can impact in a positive way? Yeah. So I'm an ethylene guy. Um, that's as well. I'm a hormone guy. I started way back in school, and I would develop plants, grasses in particular, that were I would naturally do this by through breeding genetics that were naturally more tolerant of environmental stress. So the the stress hormone is ethylene. And uh, ethylene is caused by oxidative damage inside the cell. Mm -hmm. You see, if the plant is under stress, maybe it's from the herbicide, maybe it's from the sun, maybe it's too dry, maybe it's too wet, whatever it might be. Photosynthesis is happening. If you ever stood out in that sun, it's burning you. So this is happening all the time. Now, when the plant is healthy or happy or on, it's never all or nothing, right? Yeah. But when the plant's actively working, the plant's able to take most of this sun and convert it or reflect it. So there's not much damage and all that solar energy goes into the plant. Now, when the plant is under stress, it can't do that effectively. Photosynthesis, it's happening in the chlorophyll. And chlorophylls, they're, they're called phospholipids. That's the, the name of the chemical. Lipids, fats. So fat in colder weather is harder. Mm-hmm. Fat in warmer weather is softer. So when you start to change this membrane, now suddenly the solar energy is kind of free electrons and photons. They're bouncing off in the wrong place. The plant is 90% water. You know, even during a drought, the plant has a whole lot of water in it. Sure. So what it does is it makes peroxide inside the cell of the plant. Um, You ever put peroxide on your cuts? Yeah. And it bubbles, right? foams up. Same exact thing happens inside the plant cell. So when the plant is under stress, you get this foam going on inside the cell. And that foam makes the plant make stress ethylene. And ethylene is a gas. It's cool. Uh, You might take bananas that aren't ripe and stick them in a bag close them up with some green tomatoes or something, and you can ripen fruit with your, with that, that's ethylene coming off of the, it's You can the take a ripe fruit and put it in a seal area with unripe fruit. And it'll ripen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we import all the bananas and things. We, we pick them green, we stick them in containers full of nitrogen gas, and when they get to the port, we inject them with the, in the containers with ethylene gas, and they all turn green. Or they all turn yellow Whatever for bananas. Color they might be for or we do it with tomatoes. tomatoes. They'll all turn red. So that's the one bad apple ruins a batch. Exactly. That's true. And so that that whole thing is based off of ethylene. That it's right? all ethylene. And you know, I don't want to get into crazy arguments here, like the plants talk to each other. But yes, they are. They you signal. Know? They're signaling each other I mean, through. Just look at pollination time. Absolutely. Yeah. And this gas is going now. Think a field too, a canopy. But, you know, think of a closed soybean canopy Mm -hmm. or even a Mm cornfield. There's a gas layer. This isn't just open air. There's a lot of that ethylene getting trapped. So if you're under stress because of some stressor event that's making ethylene, you got then your ethylene can float over to me so that I can start to prepare for the stress that you're experiencing because it's likely going to hit me too. Interesting. So when you apply herbicides, you have an increase of stress ethylene inside that plant. Okay. So we make an antioxidant. We call it crop stress mix. It goes inside the cell of the plant. It's made out of urea. The molecules die formal urea. And it'll go inside the cell of that plant because it's, it's an amine nitrogen. Plants love nitrogen. And when the bubble from the peroxide hits that, it breaks down and it releases its nitrogen. It releases a little bit of CO2. And it actually releases a water molecule inside the cell. And uh, it stops the signal that causes stress ethylene. Gotcha. So uh, if you're going into stress or stress timings, the crop stress mix is the, the product you really want to be using. I mean, using. it's just the name. If there's stress involved, exactly. there it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you would use a launch style product, you know, with the zinc, the manganese. You use that to provide the food that the plant needs, the nutrients. And if you know you have a stressful timing, you would choose the stress mix. It's a 313, the diformal urea, and then we add some cactus amino acids to it that are really high in saponins and other antioxidants, and that just gives you an uh, all-purpose stress-reducing compound. Got it. Okay. Um, Good year, bad year. 
we're at the last leg of the trap. So we talked about the beginning of the year, it's, it's going to be the best year of our crop. <laughs> or it's your best year of our life. <laughs> Middle is um, how much time we got, guys? Ten minutes. Okay. Oh, sorry, six minutes. Oh, geez. We're not going to fit at all. <laughs> that's okay. That'll we're be a part to, two. I was going to say, we're going to have to cut well, and do part two. Luckily, we're not at Tassel yet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. We're only halfway through the growing <laughs> season. Um, okay. So that's, uh, man, that, that's, a, that, that's well, a lot right there. One of the things maybe we should talk about is carbon. Yeah. Um, and here's another controversial topic, and I'll defend it. But I don't think we're in a nitrogen-limiting system. That's what all of our soil fertility and our nutrient budgets are based on, nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And uh, in reality, we are in a carbon-deficient system. So Absolutely. The, the plant harvests carbon from the air, from CO2. That's a whole other uh, rat hole that we can go down in another, another discussion. But this carbon has to be conserved. So the carbon's going to become root. The carbon's going to become shoot. The carbon's going to become leaf. The carbon's going to become starch. What's starch? Grain. The carbon's going to become oil. What's that? Oil, maybe bean. Uh, you know, protein, carbon. That's carbon and nitrogen. So ethylene is the only gaseous hormone that all scientists will agree on. There's probably more. But ethylene is carbon. So when the plant is growing, there's an enzyme that either turns that carbon into something called a polyamine, that it's like a naked amino that becomes an amino acid, blah, 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 right down the road, or it becomes ethylene. So if the environment's good, you grow. If the environment's bad, you make that chemical to tell you it's bad so we can all prepare, set seed, and die, because that's how plants survive to the next generation. They set seed and die. That really sets a perfect stage for part two. I thought we were going to get it one. Yeah, we're absolutely no, no not. problem. But so this is the, the I'm going to, the podcast, I already know the podcast name for this next one is The Last Lap. The Last Lap, yeah, we're at, yeah. We're at the fork in the road. Things are rough. What do we do if we should do something? And then things are good. What do we do when, how, you know, to what extent? Absolutely. So, And okay. then as an intro to that one, yeah, you know, Dent, Corn, yeah, yeah, dent corn. I yep. used to be an advisor for FFA uh, agronomy. FFA is the best. Okay. Those are the smartest kids, man. But um, dent corn is not a genetic thing. That's a characteristic or a trait of the seed. Okay. Dent corn is a physiological problem. And that's from the loss of storage carb uh, starch inside the grain. It leaves in the form of ethylene. And that's where de dent comes from. It's not moisture. It's not something we live with. Oh, yeah, that's a denting variety. You hear about pushing dent out of corn. Yeah. So if you want to hear about that, stick around for part two. So appreciate you guys. Great, great um, coming here. Robert, thank you very much. It's always much. an honor working with you, Josh. Um, your, your knowledge is, I don't know, it's great. It's great, man. It's so appreciated. I'm very opinionated. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. And uh, anyway, if you guys would like to, um, if, you, I, if you're interested in what we're talking, we're, we've got we've got videos on YouTube about uh, we're gonna have roll them out on the specific products, the Ag America products. Um, check them out on the Senior Agronomics website or yeah or YouTube channel, and then the products themselves. Um, reach out to us at singularagronomics.com. Um, we're on all social media platforms, et cetera, YouTube. Yeah, let's, let's uh, impact some crops and some farmers. I'll back you up 100%, and awesome. I'll follow up on all pounds that hit the ground. There you go. So, okay, so if uh, you want to see your field soon, let's if, get them scheduled. If you want to hear about pushing dent out of corn and finishing the last lap on crops, stick around for part two coming soon. See you guys. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.